He was Sinatra's right-hand man. He was there at CBGB's in 77, Sunset Strip in 81, and he's still going strong today. His name is Jack. Many traditions in India don't even believe in representing the body at all. So if you don't represent the body, what do you substitute the body with? And why don't you represent the body? Now, the idea of sound, nad, light, prakash, jyoti, agni, can often become very valuable substitutes in many Indian traditions. The tree can become an important substitute for the body of Krishna in the Nathdwara paintings. The tree can become a symbol of the Buddha um, in ancient Hiravada Buddhism when there was no representation of the physical body of the Buddha. He was very often substituted with the idea of a Bodhi tree. The Sharjat al uh, the Islamic text, talks about the tree as the substitute for the body, uh, for the divine body and as a symbol of the divine body. And so we have the tree as a dominant design motif that holds this room together. Sometimes parts of a body can substitute or an impression or an idea of a body can substitute for the representation of a whole body. If you look at the word, the Siddha Pratima Yantra, the Yantra, the device, which is the image of the holy man. The image of the holy man, which is nothingness. A body which can be filled with air, with light, with energy, with fragrance. There may be 1.2 billion Indians around. Yet each one of those 1.2 billion Indians seems to think that she or he is so special. Each one is unique. You can't make rules because nobody can abide by a rule because I'm not the same. I have so many exceptional circumstances that make me non-compliant with the rule in this country. Now this idea of uniqueness, of having your own unique relationship with your maker is not one that is acknowledged now, but it, is, it has been acknowledged and known always. And even in art, the idea that it is the body that forms the basis of all architecture is one that is a, an old idea in India. Now the, the Vastu Purush Mandala basically looks at how different cosmic forces, the directions of the guardians of the eight directions are placed at different points in the, uh, on the map, on a ground plan. And these eight sculptures that you see here come from such a sacred shrine where you would have the guardians of the eight directions, the Ashtadikpal, placed as they would be on a diagrammatic representation of sacred architecture around the room. So we have conversations that take place on parallel viewpoints in Indian civilization. Is the human body one which is controlled by cosmic forces? Or is the body one that you shape and you control by your own, by taking destiny into your own hands? Now the funny thing is to try and answer that question is really difficult. Because you've got to first understand what is the Indian idea of perfection? and what are the different types of bodies. You have go gods like Ganesh, which half the country seems to think is the most important figure of a divinity and is worshipped you know, widely. And you look at his body and he is a Gana. He is the Asia of the Ganas. And he is a dwarf and he is pot-bellied and he jiggles as he shakes, as he moves with every step as you can see in that 
sculpture over there. And he dances along this fat, pot-bellied dwarf. And he is considered to be so important that he's the body of a god. He's the perfect body. He's divine.